All right, so I was about to get ready to do a trucking news and insight video. As you can see, I'm still at home. Uh, I was planning to pick up my truck today because I got a phone call that it was done. And she said, I'm going to send you the invoice. And I said, invoice? She's like, yeah, the repairs that were done and everything. I was like, okay. So I just assumed it was going to be, you know, the warranty invoice or the invoice stating what they did. So she sent it to me, and it's an, it's an invoice for payment. So I look, it's like $600 or so for basically drain and refill uh, DEF uh, fluid uh, that they, the only, that the active code that they had was for low DEF and that that's all that was wrong with it. They, they, they flushed out the lines and, and whatnot. So I called back. I said, look, I said, when I had this repair order wrote, I said, I told the lady, which I don't know if it was her or not. <laughs> that this has been drained twice now in the last three weeks and it has a continuously reoccurring DEF quality issue. And she said, well, she says there's no active codes for DEF quality. She says the only code that we have that's still logged in, in I guess the computer is the low sensor, I mean the low DEF uh, light issue or whatnot. And I basically said, look, I said, you can't go into freeze frame data and see the multiple codes showing up. I said, Kenworth sends me the codes every time. I'm sure it logs them within your system somewhere uh, or that you can, you know, retrieve. So now I'm emailing her all the codes and they said, she basically said, well, we can bring it in and continue to diag it. But she said, there's a 50-50 shot that this isn't going to be warrantied and you're going to have to pay for all this extra diag time. So at this point, I just told her, I said, look, send me an invoice for a new DEF quality sensor and to have it installed. And, you know, if I have to, I'll just pay for it outright. Uh, it, I don't know. I'm just so irritated right now. Um... I can't believe I'm going to be paying for a brand new DEF quality sensor and labor and stuff on a, you know, 2023 uh, T680. So I guess, I guess this really, what this basically says, if you have a, if you have a warranty truck, don't, don't do anything to it. Don't just have it towed. Don't drive it. Don't, if it's D, if you think you have bad DEF fluid, uh, try to, hopefully you can find the receipt to where you last got it. And maybe, maybe you can get good luck getting TA or pilot or whatever to pony up the money for it. Uh, but I mean, at this point, if, if anybody's watching this and you have the money to put down on a brand new truck, I would say, go take your 30 or $40,000, try to find a bank that will finance older equipment. In fact, I, I do know a bank, um, they're in, uh, Oh man, uh, I can't think of their name right off the top of my head because I'm so angry right now. Yeah, I'm so angry right now. Um, yeah, go go find the bank. Go find a bank that'll finance older equipment and go find someone that had like a platinum rebuild uh, on like a 3406B or a C15 and, and go buy a very nice owner operated or very nice fleet owned pre-emissions truck. And make sure you have a credit card with like a $50,000 limit after that. Uh, because I want to say that trucking has gotten so screwed up that there's so many people in the owner operator's pockets that if you end up continuously having a little bit of bad luck, it, it'll just drain you dry. It'll drain you dry and you'll be just pretty much walking away from everything because you won't be able to make enough money as a uh, company driver usually to pay for all this debt you just built up trying to keep your uh, business running. And uh, yeah, sometimes I think now uh, when, you, when you do start incurring continuous problems like this or, or it just never seems like anything's going your way, just call the bank up, drop the truck off, take it back, just walk away so you're only maybe $30,000 in debt and not, I don't know, $200,000 in debt. Uh, yeah, this, this is just me being real. I mean, I, I don't care. I'm, a lot of guys are going to get on here and be like, oh, well, you're just a freaking idiot. You should never bought a new truck. You should have done this. You should have done that. Uh, you know what? You're probably right. You're probably right. I should have sold my pickup truck, took that money, and 
went and looked for the most sleaziest bank to finance a new rebuild for that old truck that I had, that 9400. Even though technically the truck's only worth maybe, you know, it's an international 9400. It's not like a, you know, 379 Pete, you know, so it's probably only worth like 12, 12, 15 thousand dollars even with a running engine. But I should just dump thirty thousand dollars in that thing or forty thousand dollars in that truck. Uh, but then who knows? I'll say this: if you haven't noticed, a lot of people getting in frames and stuff, even at like reputable uh, mechanic shops and, and and stuff, they're having problems. They're they're having uh, headline head uh, yeah head issues, liner issues. A lot of your skilled mechanics they're they're gone. They're gone, and nobody's wanting to get back into this. There's no old timers really to sit down and show these guys how to, you know, what usually happens and, and how to how to get around it and how, how to make sure that, you know, you don't have comebacks. Uh, so I don't know. I, I'm kind of, I'm really fed up right now. I don't know if I'm just going to default on this truck and just say, screw it. I don't want the freaking truck anymore uh, and go get a comedy job. Or I'm going to sit here and, I don't know between the uh let's see five hundred dollars i'll probably have like a fifteen hundred dollar two thousand dollar bill which will basically uh clean out most of my maintenance account that i have for putting tires on this truck uh you know doing brakes and things like that um either, either that or i mean i guess i could pull it out of the the tax money i've been saving up to pay my taxes <laughs> yeah yeah and i'll catch up yeah you'll catch up all right uh been there done that so yeah i'm just keeping you all updated i mean there's probably not there's not going to be a trucker news video this friday uh even though i have some really good news articles they're just I just, to be honest i just don't give a f really i just don't care i mean they take that personally take that whatever you want with a grain of salt um i'm just not really in the mood i'm just really making this video just to hopefully shield other people from enduring the the fun of being an owner operator and continuously you know when when things get hard and you start making decisions either not just folding and restarting or continuously just trying to go down go down the path of you know you'll make it up you'll make the money up you'll make the payments up you're not you're not usually once you already have some bad luck it just turns into a uh a snowball effect i'm gonna say so yeah that's uh that's me that's jackknife tv the uh the super duper in debt failing owner operator, even with a brand new truck that can't even get more than 40,000 miles out of it. And uh, yeah, I, I, I don't see a really good future anyway in trucking. I have a feeling it's just gonna continuously get worse. I'm, I'm glad that there's people right now that are making moves that are, you know, growing their fleet and, and, and are profit, you know, profiting. Uh, but there, you, you have to, you usually have to make it past a certain mark before you can not worry i guess you could say uh which which i've been there i've had two employees i've i had trucks i had money coming in i technically i didn't even have to run my truck i could have just sat at home with the kids every day uh but i still did and uh it was all for nothing you know to problems arise uh the direct customer pulled out uh economic things started to change just due to the fact that it was the election uh I guess election year and uh yeah i'm here now i'm basically here now well my, at this point i might as well just be a lease purchase driver because i'm having basically the same issues uh, but i can't really technically walk away so all right well this is jackknife tv and uh <laughs> yeah another thing I'm, I'm stuck here the kids the kids are in uh, the wife here are at the vacation house the family vacation house so you know it's not just me paying for it it's like a whole thing and um yeah i'm stuck here with no keys because she has the keys to the other beater car and uh yeah i'm just stuck here with my thoughts in this house all all by myself so uh i don't even know why i added that in there just to uh add in the <sighs> the desperation i guess you could say the 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 depression at this point the stress i'm just just here with my thoughts so uh, i guess it would be no different than if i was stuck in the truck right now because i've been there and done that but yeah i'm i'm gonna jump off i'll i'll catch everyone later